Hey, what's up? Welcome to Wing It. I'm your host, Lexi, joined here today by Brandon, Alex, and April. We're here to lay all the shit bare about entertainment, music, community, and politics. We provide the facts and insight about topics you give a shit about. Coming up today, we have the scoop on celeb breakups, the British music chart controversy, and more military bands. Thanks for tuning in. This is Wing It. Starting us off today in the world of entertainment is Brandon Tate. What do you got for us? All right, Lex. So last week, Kim Kardashian posted a throwback photo of Caitlyn Jenner before her transition on her Instagram. In the picture, Caitlyn smiles while sitting on the edge of a, a bathtub, wearing a silk robe and holding a glass of champagne in her hand, while her wedding ring being in full view. Behind her, Kris Jenner is in a tub playing uh, playfully with bubbles in the air. Last November, Caitlyn opened up about her relationship with Kim, revealing that it has been over a year since she last spoke with her. Caitlyn continues saying that none of her kids want her in her life and that they've bashed her pretty badly. Kim left fans guessing as she posted the po picture without an explanation, simply captioning it, TGFIF. TGIF. What are you doing, Kim? And after eight years of marriage, Shannon Tatum and Jenna Dewan's relationship has now come to an end. In a joint statement posted on Instagram, they wrote, we have lo lovingly chosen to separate as a couple. Sources close to the former uh, couple stated that their split has been brewing for, the, for a while now, and they've been fighting for quite a bit of time over the last couple of years. And no, it is known that the couple did attempt to amend the relationship through therapy, but it's clearly that it, it clearly didn't help to prevent the separation. Duo has publicly stated that they still are on good terms, but, but saying, we're just two best friends realizing it's time to get some space and help each other live the most joyous, fulfilled, fulfilled lives as possible. Okay. Why is everyone breaking up? What's the deal? Love's dead. That's all I gotta say. I knew they were gonna break up. Okay, do we think it's because Mercury's in retrograde? Like, astrology's shit, but like... <laughs> it's gotta be you know something. What I, mean? I yeah. feel like I say, like, astrology's bullshit, and then and I do something stupid, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Mercury's in retrograde. Like, don't worry, <laughs> it's not my fault. I just um, gotta get to The statement was weird, though. Like, if you're best friends and you're still in love, then why break up? Yeah, like, like I don't get it either. I mean, not that I'm in, like, in a committed relationship at all, but, <laughs> like, it's not like I have all this experience with love, but, like... That is weird, right? No, yeah, because like, I when thought they, it was weird. Because like how they opened it up, like they went to Instagram together and mm -hmm. said like we are lovingly separated. I feel like, like that just, I don't know. Yeah, just like we're still just, like, we're just two we're best friends. Yeah, yeah. Love. I'm yeah. Sorry. I just feel like every single day I go on social media and a different couple has broken up. That's yeah. correct. But well, I knew they were going eight to. Eight years though. Eight years. Like there's not many couples that stay along that like That's stay true. alive that long. Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. That's all we need. If they break up, I will light myself on fire. They are so cute. They're literally. Freddie and, and, and Daphne. Uh, Daphne. I know. Yeah, I know. The only thing I can think about about this is that they decided to break up on April second, and I was like, they've been they were holding off breaking up on April first. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> oh, like, no. I'm just kidding. We can't post it today. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. And a, a, a source said they were fighting all the time. I'm like, okay, well, if you're just two best friends in love, why well, fighting all the time? Like, I just am so confused about all the statement. Like, just be like. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. Also, up. why does everyone have to release a statement? Like, you don't, uh, no. I don't oh, think you anybody. Yeah. yeah, they're like, because of our lives. Like, yeah. it's like, like, it doesn't matter. Just we're just getting a divorce. Deal with it. They, yeah. I'll, I'll don't even like, tell anyone. I just like, we're just not. They also make no sense to me, like, like again, no one like again. I, I we care about you, but like right. man, like we shouldn't have to like care, care that much. much. <laughs> like, yeah, you get a divorce. Exactly. It really doesn't affect my life in any way. Yeah. You know, I do <laughs> wish for the best of both of them, obviously. Yeah. But they do, you know, they do have some money they have to work. Like I just wonder about That's the split. Like, they, kind of they have a lot of joint money, and uh, I they have a kid, yeah. a four year old. Oh so they like, they both thought they were gonna be big from Step Up, and they probably didn't get a prenup. <laughs> I bet you. He's like, oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. Yikes! All right. Best friend. He wants to give the money. As as upsetting as this is. um I do want to chat about Kim Kardashian a little bit. I know we're going to get really in-depth with it, but that was messed up. Yeah, that was I don't very know. disappointing. The caption is crazy. It. She hasn't deleted it. Yeah, no. It. It's, it's just chilling. Like, she doesn't, she, she hasn't would. said anything about it. Like, really, like, even if they apologize, it's like they're like, well, it's out there. Yeah, like, it's over 30,000 comments during the time, like, she posted it and yeah. didn't address it. Yeah, like, there's been no statement no, or anything. Nothing, no. nothing. Just went on about her life like nothing ever happened. And what did Caitlyn say? Anything? No, not about, I haven't heard anything about Caitlyn saying anything. I, I don't think that she would even try to, like, start anything up at this point. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's That's been, like, there's so much, you know, it's been dead so long, like, I feel like it's just, it's just a lot going on yeah. in that situation. All right, well, we'll get back to that uh, in a little bit. But coming up, we have Alex giving us the lowdown on all things music. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Wing It. I hope you're ready because Alex doesn't joke around when it comes to the hits. Let's hear it. 
So Talisa Contasavlos, who's known by Talisa, like a Madonna situation, has beaten Britney Spears and Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas in a lawsuit over their 2012 song Scream and Shout, which they apparently stole from her. Talisa was pretty big on the music scene in 2012 in the UK, and it was and she was so close to breaking into America with her debut album The Female Boss. But after an untimely release of a sex tape by her ex-boyfriend and drama surrounding drugs and scandals in her personal life, she completely fell off the face of the earth, and her album only did okay in the UK, and it isn't even available to stream or purchase in the US. Apparently, she co-wrote Scream and Shout with Will I Am and was set to record it on that debut album, but his producers decided against it, and it was later released with Brit, with Talisa's vocals still on the track. Also in the UK, Radio X, a radio station, put out a poll to their listeners, asking them to rank the best of British music. The list is made up of completely white male artists with not one woman or LGBTQ act represented. Live Forever by Oasis topped the list, and then the band took five other places in the top five, making me and the general public seriously question the music taste of Radio X's listener base. According to the poll that was released earlier this week, tens of thousands of people voted, and this is who they chose. That's it. <laughs> Out of the entire, <laughs> the entire musical base of the UK, you're going to pick Oasis, David Bowie, and Queen. Like, well, that's Oasis it. Oasis 15 times, too. 15 times. <laughs> Dude, their songs all sound the same. <laughs> Look at them. I also know, only know one song by Oasis. I thought they only had one song. Yeah, and Wonderwall is the one did anyone, song did anyone, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anyone know Great. that Oasis had more than one song? Because <laughs> they I did not. They in the UK, but guess who was bigger? Prada. The Spice Girls? Like, Prada. let me know. Prada. 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 Yeah, of course. Like, like there were just so many, like Adele? Like, they're not going to mention anyone that even... I don't know. It's, oh, it's crazy. Like, it's only three people of color and, like, one woman out of a hundred. You have four out of a hundred that literally, a hundred, like, and then fit, like, they have literally, well, Oasis has 15. Like, you want it to last two and a half more times than, like, clearly it was just like an Oasis like, fan base got together and yeah. voted. Like, I don't think yeah, like, go. It's probably Oasis. Like, when they released it, <laughs> they didn't think about, like, <laughs> it's, just, Oasis it's, just Oasis it's just Oasis. It's just Oasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but they hate each other, the brothers. So, like, they wouldn't even vote for it themselves. So, <laughs> Yeah, a lot of questions. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, I want to hear more about this like Will I Am yeah. drama. That's crazy. Oh yeah. Well, that's so Talisa was really big. Like she was going to be Britney Spears. I've never heard of her. And I don't yeah, exactly. I don't be honest. Yeah, it no, literally no, is no, a no. conspiracy. A, a, I read her autobiography, and apparently this like this group said she was going to be in a movie, framed her for selling coke. <laughs> no, no, literally. <laughs> Framed her for selling coke, and her career just went to shit. She was a ju she was a um, judge on the X Factor, like she was what? getting she was big in the UK, and then all of a sudden, pfft, she's the reason Little Mix won. Like I worship her. Wow. Oh and my god. Yeah. Wow. And Britney Spears like I'll just take this. Like they just like she just dead. Okay. Well, with that being said, <laughs> <laughs> coming up we have an interview with a high school student who's creating change in her community. Welcome back to Wing It. We love to see positive changes being made in our communities, especially when it comes from younger generations. This week, we sat down with Maddie Carroll, a senior at Ithaca High School. She got candid with us about what it was like taking on her theater department and how her and her peers are positively changing that space. Uh, originally, uh, Hunchback was announced and a lot of people auditioned. And after you know the casting was done, um, a bunch of people started dropping out of the show. And so somebody would drop out, and then the old director would scramble to cast somebody else, and then they would drop out. And so it just people would just kept dropping out and dropping out. And so and they were dropping out because they... They just felt uncomfortable being right. a part of it. Because um, they didn't feel like they were being represented. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so, um, you know, me for, and four of my friends went to the superintendent and went to the administration, and we basically said, like, this is not okay. Like, we don't feel like this should continue happening. And so they said, okay, like, you know, we can't do anything about it. There's not enough time. You don't have a director. You know, how are you going to get the rights? So we reached out to Joey Steenhagen, who is the artistic director of Running the Places Theater Company, which is like a local theater group in Ithaca, and basically said, like, will you please, please direct? Like, will you apply for the job? Like, we are pushing so hard to get a new show. And he was like, yeah, like, if you want me to, then I will. So um, he went into, so after a while, like after a month of the district kind of pushing back and saying, like, no, we don't have time, they finally opened up a position to, like, outside candidates. So Joey um, applied and he went in for his interview and he basically said to them, you know, you asked me to come with three, like three show options, but I'm only giving you hairspray because it's the only viable option. Like right. this is what they are pushing for. This is what they want. 
And I think that like this is the sh like the story that needs to be told, you know, this year right now. Like we can't wait for it any longer. Like it needs to happen right now. Right. And we're doing it. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um. So can you talk a little bit too about the news cycle that circulated and how? It started from an article into yeah. being this, like, now you're getting death threats yeah. on social <laughs> yeah. media. Um, so when we first started doing all of this, there was like an original video of four of us speaking at the Martin Luther King celebration uh, at BJM. And so that um, got kind of popular like around Ithaca. And then somebody reached out to us asking if they could write like a local Ithaca article about it. So I think it was the Ithaca Times, maybe. We were the trending story on Fox News for 24 hours, which was really insane. And there were like over 8,000 comments on that article. And it was like wild. Um, and so once that happened, we started getting into like this crazy rush of death threats. Like we would check our Facebooks like in an hour and like a hundred notifications like for all of us. And like someone made an Instagram page and like would follow our Instagram and would like comment on all of our posts. Like someone got Eamon's Snapchat and like Snapchatted him was like I'm gonna come to Ithaca and kill you. Like oh stuff my like God. that. And yeah. Eamon's 14. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so people would like make and so it was very obvious that like these were people who were making accounts just to bully us. Right. Like we would click on their account and it was like one, it was nothing. And it was just like, they were just on Facebook for this one thing, or just like had an Instagram for this one thing. Um, so that was happening and that was like really ridiculous. So we like oh notified God. the police and the police were, you know, looking out for us. Um, and so that happened for about a month and it was just really scary and it was just a lot. Um, and it was like kind of scary to like go to school, like where we are six hours a day where anybody could kind of find us. Yeah. Somebody found, um, where one of the moms worked, like one of our moms worked and like posted her like job on the internet and like where she worked in like her building. Yeah, and so it was like, it was just getting really, really it's intense. Very yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit about how from the theater department you felt that you really wanted to be seeked out because you wanted the theater department to be like, to take responsibility and be like, we need to be more inclusive yeah. instead of you being like, please cast more inclusive people. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that and um, how you feel it's like their responsibility to mm -hmm. seek out people and then also your opinion on uh, what some call colorblind casting? Yeah, um, so with this show, one of the things that I thought was just so incredibly beautiful was, um, so 40% of the people in the cast are people of color, which okay. is unheard of. It's like, it sounds like a small number, but it's also like, it's pretty great. Like, like there's, I think we started with 60 people in the show and so that's like, pretty big. Um, and so almost half people in the show have never been in a musical before at Ithaca High School or ever. So to the idea of colorblind casting, you know, I've had so many conversations about this and I've heard so many like different like points of views on it, but like the thing is, is that you cannot be colorblind in a society that still sees color. Yeah. Like, and I think that in 2018 people are so proud of their identities that, you know, it can almost be offensive to be like, oh, I don't see color. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you see? Yeah. Like, you're not saying me that. Exactly. So I think that, you know, in every situation, like, being colorblind it can sometimes for some people be a default, but it's not, yeah. it's not what we'd want. Yeah, I think also, too, like, with, like, colorblind casting, it's like, well, why aren't roles written specifically for, you know, peop non-white people, like, yeah, like exactly. see or, you know, people of non-binary genders. Yeah. And um, and like LGBTQ plus roles, and yeah. like I think that like there are so many roles written for like white cisgender men, yeah. and there are like two yeah. written for like those other groups that yeah. like it, it's just not fair. And there's so many other groups. It's like how can you yeah. have like one role yeah. written for them? Because then that's think about how many people that's not including. Exactly. Yeah. We've had so many good conversations as a cast. Like um, one of the big things we talked about was the role of Edna, who is a man playing a woman. Um, a lot of time in the movie, it's played as this like transphobic like making fun of like that whole culture but in you know in the musical version it's a man in drag yeah and it's a hundred percent like a beautiful drag yeah. role and so we talked about like the difference between being trans and being and doing drag and like what yeah. all those things mean and so like it was like having those conversations are so important yeah Talking about this list of demands that you mm -hmm. had that you you know went and were like this is what we want mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about what specifically was on that list yeah so i think i don't remember exactly how they went in order but right. it was um it was like stop um racist hiring practices start hiring more people of color in the department um stop hunchback start a new more inclusive show um 
right now we have you know hairspray happening and have a new director but there's a whole other like there's so many other things that we want to happen like we want at least 30 percent of the arts program to be people of color yeah. or like socially conscious people um and so like those are kind of like the next steps for us is to continue with our demands and continue with the things that we want to happen i just i think it's really important to remember that yes all of this started over you know a role in one show but it is so much bigger than the five of us in this one situation in this one show like it's such a bigger issue and i think that there it just shouldn't there shouldn't people should keep talking about it yeah. and i think it's really important to stand up for what you believe in and talk about what you believe in even if you know people want to shut you down yeah that you are allowed to be heard honestly maddie was amazing also She's April's sister. Have you seen a resemblance? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she was really great. I'm glad she talked to us. Um, but coming up, we have the breakdown on everything happening in politics. Welcome back to Wing It. Thanks for staying either because you hate us, like us, or are related to us. This week in politics, yikes. For those that don't know, Roseanne is back. The show aired at the end of March, and some say it's not doing justice to the original show, but that's not what we're as concerned with here on Wing It. The show gets candid about pro-Trump views in an era that has clear that clearly has the country so divided. An article released last week by The Hill made a claim that Roseanne is bringing conservative American women out of the closet. One claim they had is that Roseanne shows that for every trend in media and politics, there is a counter trend. The Hill argued that Roseanne speaks to every person who feels they have to hide their political political views. My question is, why do you feel you have to hide your political views? In other news, the Trump administration released an order on Friday night that would disqualify most transgender people from serving in the military. The White House said people with a history or diagnosis of gender dysphoria, the medical diagnosis for those who receive treatment often during their transition, are disqualified from serving under, except under, quote, certain limited circumstances. The somewhat contradictory plan has left many experts and transgender advocates confused over who would be allowed in and who would be kicked out. They could really discharge anyone who is transgender in the military. This is a categorical ban, said Matthew Thorne, president of the LGBT Military Association, Association OutServe. This comes almost a year after Trump tweeted la that he would reverse the Obama error policy allowing transgender people to serve openly. I have a lot of thoughts about this. Yeah. Um, this is something that, uh, well, I want to hear, I want to hear um, your opinions first. We'll talk about uh, Roseanne. So now on Wing It, uh, this is really the time that we discuss and debate some of the topics that we've shared throughout the show. First, we'll start with politics, then entertainment, and finally music. Each panelist will provide the research and opinions they share on these topics. So like I said, we're going to start with um, our first politics story of this week. Roseanne, give it to me. I want to hear about. I want to hear your opinions, opinions about this. Well, the first thing that I thought of was uh, here in our own IC community, there was a little dis dis yep. disruption about this idea of um, conservatives being in the minority. And so the IC Republicans Club basically called out some people um, that were telling them that they shouldn't be that they shouldn't be advocating for this idea of free speech because they're bringing these very like self-hating, awful like kinds of people to campus. And they were saying, wow, we feel so like attacked and we feel like, you know, it's so hard to be um, a minority here on this campus. And I was like, that's that's not what that word means, is it? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. So I, yeah, I don't know. I, that's just exactly what I thought when Roseanne when this idea of like bringing conservative women out of the closet, like they were never in the closet. Yeah. There was no closet here for you. <laughs> like, I think also yeah. too that people, s I hate this idea that conservatism is a minority because that is your opinion. And that's when someone looks at you and they say, and they can't tell your opinions. And obviously you're, you're wearing something like a make America great again hat. You can take that off. You know what people can take off? I can't take off my genitalia. I can't take, like, people can't take off the color no. of their skin. No. Nope. Things like that. <laughs> but, like, you can take off that conservative hat that you're wearing because those are your opinions, not something you were born with that you can't change about yourself. And also, are you, you know, worried that people are going to hate you because you're Republican? Or are you worried that people are going to hate you because you're racist? Right. There like, it is. Saying, yeah. Why can't you 
talk, why can't you express your political opinions? Do you think they're wrong in some way? Yeah, is it, they are, are they politically yeah. driven or are they racially or problematic? It's not about politics if you're, you know, pro being anti other people. And I think, yeah, yeah what do you think of this? Yeah, it's just, the whole thing is crazy um, in regards to the fact that, you know, again, like bringing what April said, like this, the whole, coining the term minority is not even, the real, they're not even using the right definition, yeah, using yeah. it in the right place. Yeah. Um, so or closet. closet yeah, like yeah. that's. Well, actually again, taking two yeah. other separate yes. issues <laughs> and applying <laughs> them to you. You're like, oh yeah, that's me. Trying yeah. to make themselves more of a victim when they're really not. Um, yeah. So yeah. It, I just, it's, it's crazy in regards to all yeah. that. Just, the Hill actually wrote that there's an estimated 15 million closet conservatives in America today. You're, no. You're not closeted, you're just mad people are gonna be pissed off at you. Yeah. For your opinions. And I'm not claiming to have ever seen Roseanne, to be honest, but I never want to. And I'm, I wouldn't be happy that Roseanne yeah. was the one championing my rights. Right, like, like the yeah. conservative party. <laughs> what? Like, I'm Roseanne is the spokeswoman for conservatism. Hey, I'm joining, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I mean, we have to move on, unfortunately, but all right, this Trump, this is not the first time Trump has attacked no. transgenders in the military. Sure. And like, also I love people like Tommy Laurent, who's like, pro-military and I'm like okay what do we do to veterans that come home we treat them like shit we don't even give them good health care and like what is isn't it like 27 veterans um commit suicide every day yeah it's crazy it's and then awful. also like how can we not support every single military regardless of their gender affiliation right, 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 right. Like, also, like, <laughs> is about like or it's about if you literally cannot perform the task yes right yeah what about that being transgender means I can't like Perform shoot a gun? Yes. Like I'm just confused. And also I think a lot of people are saying, well, like I don't want to pay for transitions. It's not necessarily um, like imperative to their medical health. But like how much money do we give the military for Viagra? Much more than we give for uh, <laughs> like transitions. So let me know. Right. And all I was thinking about during this was just the fact that like you are, transgender people are living in an age that nobody wants them to be out and nobody wants them to be trans and yet they are still fighting for, yeah, for to fight for a country that doesn't like, like them. They just want the basic right, right to be in a country and fight for a country that doesn't even want them. Yeah. Also too, it's like, so true. it's so vague. If, when there aren't, if you're gonna do something like this, you shouldn't. I think this ban is so, it's so incredibly problematic. Um, but I also think, if you're gonna do a ban like this, you have to have at least like rules and guidelines. This is just like Bro, some so people, we may right. let some yeah. people in yeah. depending that on how we feel that day. It just shows like that they can just pick and choose whoever yeah. they want to yeah. target yeah. in uh, regard. Like specific it's, cases. Okay, which ones? Yeah. Like give us the what, what did they do that bothered? Like it's just so <laughs> stupid, but unfortunately we have to move on again. Um, <laughs> so I really wanted to talk about, I really loved the Channing Tatum story, but I was so intrigued. And I think we all felt very opinionated about the Kim Kardashian Trans uh, yeah. pre transition picture. Um, Problematic. So, yeah. <laughs> give, me the, give me your thoughts on that. Give me your. I know we did like a little research on it. What'd you guys find about that? Well, I can just kick it off. Is like it's just insane. I just I have questions. Just the fact is like I don't understand if Kim is trying to just reminisce or what is going on because if you haven't like they haven't spoken yeah. over a year and a half. Um, yeah. Basically, the entire family cut you know Caitlyn out. Yeah. Ties with Caitlyn yeah. once the transition was complete. Um, so like with that, this doesn't make any, make any sense. There's no there's no conversation. You don't speak with her. Uh, you don't really don't want her in your life, and then you just post something like I don't understand. Like what are you trying to target her? Yeah. Are you trying yeah. to initiate some type of battle? I don't. I just don't understand. Like I just feel like it's just wrong in yeah. so many levels. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. Yeah. Um, and even if say they don't like Caitlyn, say Caitlyn's a horrible. Like if they don't like Caitlyn, that's is you still don't like like completely invalidate her gender. Yeah. And her yeah. Like. Yeah. Her experience yeah, yeah. with that and <coughs> her and overcoming everything. like everything she had to go through. Yeah, exactly. That was what I was thinking. I was like, you don't have to like Caitlyn and you can right. not be in Caitlyn's life. But the fact that she posted this photo knowing that this was not who Caitlyn identifies as. Yeah. And then she didn't even, like, the caption is really what got me. TGIF, like, thank God it's Friday. What? Why would you ever post anything like that? On with such a simple with no explanation. Yeah, yeah. nothing. And it's same. Like makes no. And I, like again, like thank God it's Friday. Symbolize so many like different what? things. Like yeah. thank God it's Friday. The week is over. Like thank yeah. God, like that's over. Like, it's something like yeah. Again, the connection between it's just and I, I I'm still fathom. Like I don't know why. Like what you're trying what? to stir and up. And I Kim, think like, also too like I don't I think Caitlyn Jenner has been very problematic in the past, and I don't mm -hmm. agree with yeah. everything she's done. 
But like I was reading, um, like Glad is a really great website um, for like LGBT communities and allies, mm -hmm. and they had this um, whole article about transgenderism and. Um, and they said, don't, one of their tips was don't ask a transgender person what their real name is. And then um, in that category was similarly, don't share photos of someone before their transition unless you have yeah. their permission because it's, inc that's not who, that's not who they identify as anymore. Mm -hmm. That is incredibly traumatizing to them. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I just, and it's not like it was a picture I felt of really her bad in that situation. and, like, it was just a, like, this is such a random picture to post with him front and center. Right. Like, okay. Like, why? And she yeah. has so many followers to begin with. Yes. And so, of course, it's going to be traumatizing. And she's mm -hmm. basically saying to her followers, it's okay to disrespect trans people. Yeah. And if you don't like them. Yeah. What yeah. They and invalidate yeah. who, right. they who they are. are. Yeah. yeah. All right. People. Fortunately, again, we have to move on. But, um, <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about some music. Alex, I really um, want to hear what else you found about this British artist of all time. There was such a good tweet that I read that, um, like, everyone, like, people were outraged, but they, did they vote? That's another thing. Like, actual, like, did yeah, they did vote for the people? Vote, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's, I'm tying it back to real world. Like, let me know. Yeah. Did you participate? Exactly. Were you an advocate for these people who weren't being represented in this poll? Right. Exactly. Um, I read an article by Paste, and it was, like, the 50 best British artists of all time in the top, like, I read, like, the um, bottom <coughs> 10, so, like, 50 through 40, and then I read mm -hmm. 1 through 10. All men. Yeah. All men, all groups of men. Obviously, like, the Beatles are up there and stuff like that, but... Right, and people, like, like obviously, Bowie, the Beatles, like, they're... An Oasis song should be up there. An Oasis song. Yeah. Every One. Oasis song? Every album they've ever done? Yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, a history of Britain being, like, men. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, I love it's, men. It shows, again, like, in the music, like... Has so much. We have so much farther to go. Like you, like, you know, we still come. Like you know, we've had all this movement and all this progression, but it's still even in the music field, women are not getting identified. You know, right. you know, they're not getting appreciative for the work they've done. Um, people of color still aren't. You know, and this is yeah. Yeah, a different culture. Yes, it's British, but still, like they have been made impacts all across the world, and we still aren't. You know, appreciative of what the things that we've done. So it's again, I, again, it also comes back to what you said. Like who was voting? Um, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I understand if they were doing like it was a lot of people from a. A time it was a lot of '90s, like very like okay. There were still women then. There were still people yeah, of like, color so then. Like, like also like, like, Adele, just like how can we not Adele? Right. Uh, yeah, Adele's from now, but ever, like obviously she's a, like an, an impeccable musician. Like why are people like even if it was then, and there was this specific genre of rock. Like there's mm -hmm. still so many people that they didn't even think about. Like and also yeah, it's like who is fighting for them to be represented. Right. But um, our final story. We were gonna chat about this sex oh, yeah. tape scan, like this um. lawsuit with Will I Am, and yeah. I just can't believe they actually used her voice on the track that Britney released after the like, entire. Like that time. is illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's my other thing illegal. too. Is like, I found it very interesting that that sex tape, like quote unquote, ruined her life. Mm. I, and then I, I was thinking about like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I was like, Ray J made like a hit yeah. song about his sex tape with Kim, yeah. and Kim to this day is shaved about her sex tape. Right. All right. And what did she do? <laughs> but what did she do that yeah. like nothing? It was her ex boyfriend released a sex tape. Yeah. Right. Like, how is she supposed to combat that? Yeah. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching us say the shit we were all thinking. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Wing It With Lex. Thank you guys so much for being here and just Thank chatting. You, yes. All right, bye.